الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله الناصح الأمين اللهم صل على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تمسك بسنته إلى يوم الدين ثم أما بعد الحمد لله الحمد لله We continue with the sisters workshop and before continuing from where we left off yesterday I wanted to remind the sisters and to share with them some very beautiful words from our Sheikh, Sheikh Abdul Razak Al-Badr, Hafizahullah Ta'ala. The Sheikh, Hafizahullah Ta'ala, he said, طيب الله حياتك بالعلم والإيمان وطيب أوقاتك بطاعة والإحسان وطيب بدنك بالسطر والإحتشام The فضيلة الشيخ he mentions any a beautiful dua for our noble sisters and that is what means may Allah beautify your life may Allah beautify your life with knowledge and with faith may Allah beautify your life with knowledge and with iman and this is something which is tremendously beautiful and the benefits that are contained therein are tremendous. And we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He beautifies all of our lives with knowledge and with iman. The shaykh, he goes on and he says, And may Allah beautify your time. May Allah beautify your time with obedience and with actions that are done in a most excellent manner. So may Allah beautify your time, O noble sister, with obedience unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the performing of deeds in a most beautiful and excellent of manners. And we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He beautifies all of our time with his obedience and performing actions in the most beautiful of manners. The Shaykh goes on in the next line and he says, وَطَيِّبَ بَدَنَكِ بِالسِّطْرِ وَالْإِحْتِشَامِ And may Allah beautify your physical person by, may Allah beautify your physical person by uh, covering you and by making you one who is who is shy. It is incumbent, my dear sisters, as, as the Shaykh goes on, he mentions, عَلَيْكِ أَن تَسْتَشْعِرِ أَيَّتُهَا الْفَاضِلَ أَنَّ النِّعْمَةَ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى عَلَيْكِ بِهَذَا الدِّينَ عَظِيمًا he says that it is upon you, it is upon you, sisters, to know and to sense. It is upon you to know and to sense, oh my noble sisters, oh you noble woman, that the bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon you with this religion, the bounty of Allah upon you by guiding you to Islam, then verily this bounty is tremendous. This is a great bounty. This is a beautiful, yani, a tremendous bounty. And this favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, subhanahu wa ta'ala upon you, 
يعني بالهداية إليه كبيرة and this bounty this 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 blessing this tremendous gift in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he has bestowed upon you by guiding you to Islam then verily this is a very very big bounty a very very big blessing indeed because the deen of al-islam huwa deen huwa deen alladhi irtadahu li'ibadihi it is the deen that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is pleased with this religion for his servants Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is pleased with the deen of al-islam for his servants and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kamalahu lahum and he has he has completed the religion unto you or well, he has completed the religion for you he has completed the deen for us wallahi alhamd and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is the deen that he accepts he does not accept any other deen he does not accept any other deen as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says inside of his noble book inna ad-deena 'inda Allah al-islam that verily the religion the only religion the only way of life that is accepted by Allah is Islam the only way of life the only religion that is accepted by Allah is Islam and this is important that we understand this and important that we know this and important that we remind ourselves of this fact because when individuals start to come and they start to speak about lifestyles alternative lifestyles as compared to traditional lifestyles and so on and so forth it is incumbent that we know that what that the only lifestyle that is accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Islam and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he was not accept any lifestyle except for what Islam Allah does not accept any deen except for Islam so it is incumbent that we remember the likes of this and we remember the bounty that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon us in this regard also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says in his noble book wa man yabtaghi ghayra al-islam deenan falan yuqbal minhu wa huwa fi al-akhirati min al-khasirin and who Allah ta'ala he says what means and whoever in whoever wants whoever desires a religion other than Islam whoever wants or they desire a way of life other than al-Islam it will never be accepted from them and in the hereafter they will be from what the losers it will never be accepted from them and in the hereafter they will be from the losers wa iyadu billah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he has completed for us our religion and he is pleased that we have Islam as our deen Allah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says in his noble book boys settle down settle down boys settle down sit down settle down Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says inside of his noble book al yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati wa raditu lakum al-islam deena Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says what means and on this day i have perfected for you your religion and completed my bounty completed my favor upon you and i am pleased that you have islam as your religion i am pleased that you have islam as your religion please that you have islam as your way of life so our religion our way of life our deen is al islam is al islam that islam that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with that islam that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he has perfected yani uh, and made it complete so alhamdulillah we are in no need of anything that these individuals can ever have to offer us 
We have with us in the deen of Al-Islam that which suffices us and makes us free and in no need of anything from the kafir lifestyle, from the kafir ideology, from the kafir thinking and mentality, so on and so forth. Naam? So on and so forth. The, before getting into and continuing from where we had left off, let us remind, let us remind and give a reminder of what was covered yesterday. And what was covered yesterday. Boys, sit down. Sit down and relax. No more playing. Sit down, sit down. Sit down, sit down. It's listen. Imam Sa'di, Imam Ta'ala, he mentions, he mentions, as related to the ayah that we covered in yesterday's class. Now, the ayah that we covered in yesterday's class, that was homework for everyone to memorize. The the, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says فَالصَّالِحَاتُ قَانِتَاتٌ حَافِظَاتُ لِلْغَيْبِ بِمَا حَافِظَ اللَّهِ That the meaning of this ayah ma'am, Those righteous ones So thus the righteous women Those women who are obedient Those who protect uh, That which is has to be protected From the rights of their husbands And so on and so forth uh, in their absence, now due to that which Allah has bestowed upon them from protection and given them the tawfiq, so on and so forth. Imam Musadi he mentions as it relates to the tafsir of this ayah that mudifatuha. So therefore, the responsibility and the job of the woman, the responsibility and the job of the woman is to what? Al qiyam bi ta'ati rabbiha. That she has to establish the obedience to her Lord. zawjiha, And she has to establish the obedience to her husband. Of course, the obedience to her husband in that which is well known. Bil-ma'roof. That which is well known. As there is no obedience inside of disobedience. As the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, La ta'a lil makhluq fi ma'asiyat al-khaliq. That there is no obedience to the creation that involves disobedience to the Creator. Naam. So therefore, the obedience is in that which is ma'roof, is in that which is ma'roof, that which is well known, that which is halal. Thus, Imam Musa'ri, he goes on to say, Lihada, due to this, meaning, showing us that the the, the job and uh, the, the responsibility of the woman is to establish the obedience to her Lord and the obedience to her husband. Thus, in light of this, and due to this, or we understand this from Allah Ta'ala's statement, قال الله تعالى فالصالحات So thus, those women who are righteous, قانتات Those women who are يعني, قانتات And we went over in the last week's class, or excuse me, in yesterday's class, the meaning of qunut, naam, and those things which enter into it, and those descriptions that the woman who establishes this, those qanita, then they are adorned with, naam. Ay, the shaykh, he says, meaning, muti'at lillah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning that they are those who are obedient unto Allah, azza wa jal. They are obedient unto Allah, azza wa jal. And then Allah ta'ala, he says, hafidhatun lil ghayb, those who they guard and they protect and they preserve the rights uh, meaning that they are those who they are obedient unto their husbands even when he's not there even outside of his presence when he is not present they are still obedient unto him they safeguard and protect the rights of their husband be nafsiha as relates to herself. So she protects the rights of her husband as relates to herself. Wa malihi and the rights of her husband as relates to his money and his wealth. Naam as relates to his money and as relates to his wealth. 
وَذَلِكَ And all of this, all of this, بِحَظِّ اللَّهِ لَهُنْ All of this is due to Allah's protection for them. All of this is due to Allah Ta'ala's protection for them. وَالتَّوْفِيقِهِ لَهُنْ And due to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala granting them the success. Due to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala granting them the success. بِمَا حَفِظَ Allah. Due to that which Allah Ta'ala he has preserved for them. Naam. And this is important that we know and we understand and we remember this fact. Imam Sadi he goes on and he says, لِأَنَّ أَنفُسِهِمْ He says, uh, يعني, that all of this, or before that he says, that this tawfiq, this success in which Allah Ta'ala has given to them, he said that this what they find themselves upon from goodness and righteousness and so on and so forth, لا من أنفسهن. It's not from themselves. It's not that which has come forward due to their souls. It is not that that they were able to accomplish by themselves. But it is that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He has bestowed upon them from grace and blessings. It is that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He has granted them the success in doing. For in the nafs, because the soul, amaratu bisu. Because the soul, it commands us to do evil. وَعِيَاذُ billah. The soul, it, it's commanding, it commands us to do evil. وَلَكِنْ مَنْ تَمَكَّرَ عَلَى اللَّهِ كَفَاهُ اللَّهِ مَا أَهَمَّهُ مِنْ أَمْرِ دِينِهِ وَدُنْيَاهِ But the one who he puts his true trust in Allah, and by, remember, when one puts his trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then this is an individual who what? He puts forward the asbab. He puts forward the asbab. As far as the individual who says, no, I will sit on my hands and, you know, I will sit here in the kitchen on my hands and I would, uh, uh, but I'm still going to eat a sandwich. I'm not going to get up. I'm not going to leave my chair. I'm not going to go to the refrigerator. I'm not going to get the lunch meat. I'm not going to get the mayonnaise or the mustard. I'm not going to get the bread. I'm not going to get the lettuce. I'm not going to get, not going to get. But I'm going to eat a sandwich. You watch. Now you ask him, how you going to eat a sandwich? You say, because I have trust in Allah. But he don't don't get up to go make the sandwich. He doesn't get up to put forth any effort in towards acquiring a sandwich. So what do we say about a person? That person with that mentality is sick. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is not what he has legislated, but he has made it binding upon us to to do what? To take the asbab. To take the asbab. So we have to take the means and the causes by way in which to accomplish that which we're looking to accomplish. But we know the whole time that that thing is unaccomplishable without any except that we have to have the success from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Without the tawfiq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will not be able to accomplish anything. Naam. And it's important that we know and we understand this. And this is from the things that will keep the person who's upon good, the person who's upon yani, uh, uh, uprightness, humble. And they will not become big on themselves and big-headed and thus look down upon others and so on and so forth, thinking that they have and they have and they have, because they will know that whatever they have from goodness, whatever they have from those things which are covered in and to be cherished, then it is by the bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which should reinvigorate them to be thankful unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to show gratitude unto Allah Jalla wa'ala. We had left off yesterday with a hadith, and before revisiting that hadith, I want to mention another hadith. Now, before revisiting that hadith, I want to mention another hadith. Because it's important that the sisters really take these things seriously and they really work hard and they strive and put forth a great amount of effort into being righteous and to establishing those things in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mandated upon them to establish uh, as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said, احرص على ما ينفعك واستعن بالله Work hard and diligently over that which benefits you and put your trust inside of Allah. Put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Naam. It's not the hadith we wanted to mention first to you. That wasn't the one we had intended, but that was a reminder from what? Yesterday's class, as it was mentioned there. But we want to remind the sisters of the stakes. We want to remind them of the stakes and remind them 
of how detrimental it is if they are not guided, if they are not those who are upon righteousness and so on and so forth. We want to remind them of the stakes and remind them of the reality of the situation. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentions as it comes inside of the hadith of Abdullah bin Umar radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma fima rawahu bin Umaja wa sahahahu al-Albani and is that which has been collected or is narrated on the authority of Abdullah bin Umar radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma and it has been collected in Ibn Umaja and it has been graded as authentic by al-Albani. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Ya ma'ashar al-nisa, O women, O women. So here, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he's addressing who? The sisters, the women. He says, O women, tasaddaqna. He said, give sadaqa. Give sadaqa. He's encouraging these women, what? Give sadaqa. Give sadaqa. Wa akthirna min al-istighfar. And to say a lot. Astaghfirullah To ask that Allah forgive you much To ask that Allah forgive you much This here These characteristics no doubt If anybody Male or female Were to adorn themselves with these traits And attributes That it will be good for them Naam That they are ones who are charitable They give charity Naam فَاتَّقُنَّارْ وَلَوْ بِشِقِّ tamra. Fear the fire Even if it's with a piece of a date Meaning even if you give it in charity, a piece of a date. You don't even have a whole date to give. You can't afford to give even a whole date. Naam. But you can afford to give a piece of a date. Then give a piece of a date in charity. Naam. Give a piece of a date in charity. All of us will benefit from this. Naam. But in particular, we want to focus upon the women. As the Prophet Wasallam, he was addressing them in particular. Naam. And specifically. O women, O assembly of women, give charity, give charity, ma'am, and increase in asking Allah to forgive you. Ask Allah to forgive you a lot. All of us should be asking that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives us a lot. All of us should increase and have upon our tongues much. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, rabbughfirli, huh? and the like. And if we find that we are not those who have this upon our tongue, then no, we're setting ourselves up for destruction. But we should always be asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us. So, you don't have to answer out loud, but just answer to yourself. How much or how many times have you asked Allah to forgive you today, up until this point? A person may say, you know what? It's still early. We had the time go back. I'm a little off track, whatever. So maybe this is not a good measuring stick. So we say, okay, we'll give you that. How much times did you ask Allah to forgive you yesterday? How many times did you say yesterday, Astaghfirullah? How many times did you say yesterday, Oh Allah, forgive me? How many times did you say yesterday, Rabbi Ghfirli, Allahumma Ghfirli? How many times you said it yesterday? Okay, you have your skills today, okay. How many times you said it yesterday? Okay, what about the day before that? How many times you say the day before that? And so on and so forth. This is a reminder for all of us, all of us, to increase in asking Allah to forgive us. Because as the ulama they mentioned, the one who comes, Yawmul Qiyamah, and he has inside of his record, he has inside of his record, much asking Allah to forgive them, then this is part of the equation of happiness and success. This is part of the equation of happiness and success. For lack of a better term, this is part of the recipe for happiness and ultimate success. Ma'am. So we have to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala much to forgive us. So sisters, increase in asking Allah to forgive you. Increase in asking Allah to forgive you. Increase in asking Allah to forgive you. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, فَإِنِّي رَأَيْتُكُنْ He said, because verily I saw you, you meaning you women, I saw that the women, أَكْثَرَ أَهْلَ النَّارِ they were the most of the people in the fire. That most of the people in the hellfire, I saw there was women. I saw there was women. Ma'am. فَقَالَتْ So one of the, the sisters who was there, فَقَالَتْ امْرَأَةٌ مِنْهُنْ 
one of the sisters who were there from those sisters who were being addressed, one of the yani, uh, uh, Sahabiyah from the Sahabiyat, she asked, but, they, but this Sahabiyah, yani, she was uh, Jazla, Jazlatun. She was a woman who, she was wise. She One of the sisters, she was very wise, she was very smart, she was very intelligent, she was very sound in her judgment. Ma'am, all of this yani, could be understood from Jazla, that she was a woman from amongst them, and she was very smart, wise, intelligent, sound in her judgment. She asked, وَمَا لَنَا يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ She said, oh, Messenger of Allah, what's wrong with us? What's wrong with us? What's, what's, what's our condition? Why this would be the case? وَمَا لَنَا يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ and what is wrong with us, O Messenger of Allah, that we are the most of the people inside of the fire? فَقَالَ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وسلم, So the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, he said, تُكْثِرُنَ اللَّعْنِ He said that because you curse a lot, meaning what, women in general, not those particular ones on whom he was addressing, but just women in general, because women in general, they curse a lot. They use their tongues in a bad manner. Verbally abusing, lashing, and cursing people, and so on and so forth. Naam. So, as opposed to doing that, then what? Akthirna min al istighfar. Instead of doing that, then increase in asking Allah to forgive you. Use your tongue in a beneficial way. Naam. The reason why the women are most of the people in the fire because they curse a lot. They curse a lot. Wa wa al ashir and. They make kufr of the ashir. They make kufr of the ashir. Naam. So what does this mean here? They make kufr of the ashir, meaning of the husbands. What does it mean that she make, she make kufr of her husband? Right? Does that mean she disbelieve in her husband? Does kufr here mean disbelief in that sense? No, it does not. Kufr here, it means ungratefulness. That they are ungratefulness. They show ingratitude. Naam. They show ingratitude. So when a person looks at this and he understands that, yes, the showing of ingratitude, this also enters into the overall meaning of kufr, of disbelief, then he, and, 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 and then he sits back and he reflects on how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has created the heavens and the earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made the, uh, uh, the, the earth as a, as a bed, a place of rest. He has made the sky as a canopy. Ma'am. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends down the rain. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He brings forth the vegetation so that the people they can eat from it and so on and so forth. Right? Allah ta'ala does this for who? For everyone. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has created us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has given us the attributes and the traits and the characteristics in which we have from the ability to, to, to hear, to see, to feel, to smell, so on and so forth. Ma'am. All of these wonderful bounties in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us these limbs, these limbs by way in which that we make sujood. Ma'am. Wa inna al-masajid lillah. That verily, the masajid, they belong to Allah. Ma'am. The early man they say was meant by these masajid also enters into it, the limbs by way in which we make sujood. The limbs by way in which we prostrate. But with that, with all of that and more, the human being, he still disbelieves in Allah. The human being, he still he turns to Allah with uh, hold on. Yeah, take these. You need the you need the note back to? You need this back to? <laughs> but even with that, the, the human being he has the nerve, he has the audacity to disbelieve. To disbelieve. Is this not the ultimate ungratefulness? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you that body and you got the audacity to utilize that body to pray to other than Allah. You have the audacity to utilize that body to make worship to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is this not the greatest show of ingratitude? Is this not the greatest illustration of ungratefulness? And so on. Uh, of course. Of course. So... We see how an aspect and yani, from the meanings of kufr is what? To be ungrateful. So the women, they 
find a lot of times are what ungrateful to the husbands, ungrateful to the husbands. And it's important for the sisters to step back and to be appreciative, to be appreciative of the husbands and that which they do, even the little things, and to not to take things, yani, for granted, or to not look at things and say, well, you're supposed to do that anyway. You understand? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You bought me a coat. But you know what? You're supposed to do that anyway. Yeah, you paid the rent. But you're supposed to do that anyway. No, show gratefulness. Show, I mean, show gratitude for the likes of these things. Be appreciative. Be, be appreciative. And being appreciative, no doubt, this is a characteristic of a good wife. Not cursing, no doubt, is a characteristic of a good wife. So when we look at those characteristics which make uh, yani, uh, uh, that the women who are being the hellfire that they are adorned with, the opposite of those characteristics are the characteristics of the women of Jannah, are the characteristics of good women, are the characteristics of righteous women, are the characteristics of good wives. Ma'am, that is what? They don't curse and they are not unappreciative to their what? To their husbands. They're not unappreciative to their husband. Ma'am, wait, right. to the husbands. Khair? So, this is just to remind us, sisters, that the, the stakes are high. The stakes are high. They're very high stakes. So with that being the case, it, put, it sheds some more light upon this uh, hadith. Sheds some more light upon this hadith. And that is the, the first narration. The first narration is... Ja'a, it comes inside of the Sahih, or it comes inside of the collection by Ibn Habban, Ibn Habban. And it's on the authority of Abu Huraira. And it's on the authority of Abu Huraira, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. And it was the narration that we yani, mentioned at the conclusion of yesterday's class. وَأَنَّ النَّبِي And that is that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam قال, he said, إِذَا صَلَّتِ الْمَرْأَ خَمْسَهَا If a woman, if a woman prays her five, وَصَامَتْ شَهْرَهَا And she fasts her month. وَحَصَّلَتْ فَرْجَهَا And she protects her private parts. Her private parts are only utilized in the halal. Now she protects her private parts. This is what is understood and meant by وَحَصَّنَتْ فَرُجَهَا وَأَطَاعَتْ بَعْلَهَا And she obeys her husband. And she obeys her husband. She listens to her husband. Right? دَخَلَتْ مِنْ أَيِّ أَبَوَابِ الْجَنَّةِ شَاءَتْ Then she will be able to enter into any door of Jannah that she wants. She'll be able to enter into any door of Jannah that she wants. This is tremendous now, you see. وَرَوَى إِمَامْ أَحْمَدْ And Imam Ahmed, he mentions inside of his Musnad, بَنْ حَدِيثْ عَبْدُ الرَّحْمَانِ بِنْ عَوْفِ رضي الله تعالى عنه أَنَّ النَّبِي صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ قَالْ That the Prophet صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ He said, إِذَا صَلَّتِ الْمَرْأَ خَمْسَهَا If a woman prays her five, وَصَامَتْ شَهْرَهَا And she fasts her month. وَحَفِظَتْ فَرْجَهَا And she preserves and protects her private parts. وَأَطَاعَتْ زَوْجَهَا And she is obedient and obeys her husband. قِيلَ لَهَا Right? It will be said unto her. Now listen, I want you to keep both of these narrations in mind so you can see the benefit in mentioning both of them. Ma'am? The first narration, it says that if she were to do these same things that were mentioned, then, it, then she can enter into any door of Jannah that she wants. Right? So for a, a sister now, it is, it is known the happiness that will come to you knowing that what, Yomul Qiyamah, you'll be able to enter into any door of the Jannah that you want if you are adorned with the characteristics that are mentioned here in this hadith. Okay? If you are adorned with these characteristics, 
you'll be able to enter into any door of the jinnah that you want. So now what kind of happiness would that bring to the sisters? What kind of happiness would that uh, produce unto her? Boys, shh, quiet. What, what happened? When they come in, yeah? As soon as the brother leaves, they start making all the noise, huh? After the coppers gave them donuts? You want me to confiscate them donuts? All right, yeah, quiet down. What kind of happiness? Imagine the happiness that it would bring to the sisters to know that Yom al Qiyamah, you enter into any door of the gender that you want. Right? So, imagine the joy now. I want you just to reflect for a minute. You know Yom al Qiyamah is going to be a very hard and a tough day, a day that, you know, be very scary. And, and even saying that is, is, a, is a very, it's a gross, Yanni, uh, what you say, it's, 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 it's a gross understatement, okay? It's a day that's going to be very terrifying. But imagine the joy, imagine the joy the righteous Muslim woman, she going to receive on that day. Qila laha, when it's said to her, not just is known she can enter any door, of Jenna that she wants, but no, it's said unto her. That is mentioned unto her, it's said unto her on that day, Udu Khuli Jannah. Enter into Jannah. Udu Khuli. You, woman, righteous woman, enter into Jannah. Men ayi abawab in Jannati Shitti. Enter into Jannah from any door of Jannah that you want. That she is now addressed directly on that day. Enter into Jannah from any door that you want. Any door that you want. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. So it is important that these sisters, they take this very seriously. And they see the great uh, bounty that is contained therein. The Shaykh, he says. The Shaykh, he says. فَهَنِيئًا للمرأة المسلمة بهذا موعود الكريم والفضل العميم. he says. نعم ما أدرى شن. apologize we had to change the the batteries. Uh, so sisters listen. what congratulations now for the Muslim woman, right? and for those following along now we're on page uh, 18. Page 18, right? He says, so what means, Yani? So, congratulations to the Muslim woman for receiving this noble promise and this virtue that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He has yani, uh, bestowed upon her. Now, this, this tremendous virtue, wal khair alladhi wa'adaha Allah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He has promised her with. And he and 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 and, uh, and 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 that he has promised her that she that she will have, right? Amal, and I want you to listen to this: the actions that the woman she would get this reward, and it will be said unto her, enter into Jannah from any door in which you please, right? Is is for her doing four things. The Shaykh he says, Amal arba'a, just four things. تعدها المرأة على أصابع يده الواحدة that she can count them on one hand she can count them on one hand وليس على أصابع يدين not upon two hands right it don't take two hands to count it you don't need all the fingers on both hands but just the finger on just the fingers on one hand you can count these things and you won't even use up all the fingers of that one hand that's it أعمال أربعة just four things four things you have to do إذا حافظت عليها يقال لها يوم القيامة أدخل الجنة من أي أبوابها شئتي that if she were to safeguard and preserve the likes of these things sisters listen if you were to safeguard and protect and preserve these four things on the day of judgment it will be said unto you enter into Jannah from any door you want. Any of the doors that you want, enter into the Jannah from those doors. أَلَيْسَ حَقِيقًا بِالْمَرْأَةَ النَّاصِحَ لِنَفْسِهَا 
and ta'na bi hadhihi al-awsaf would it not then be the responsibility will it not then behoove behoove the woman who is sincere unto herself the one who is true yani really true to herself and sincere unto herself that she has a serious concern for these characteristics a serious concern for these characteristics wa an tahtamma bi hadhihi al khilal and that she strives to be upon and to adorn herself with the likes of these characteristics wa an tawadhaba ala ada'i hadhihi al a'mal and that she works hard and very diligently to be consistent upon performing these actions performing these deeds hifdhuha li salatiha her preserving her prayer wa hifdhuha li siyamiha and her preserving her fast wa hifdhuha li farjiha and her preserving her private parts wa hifdhuha li huquqi zawjiha and her preserving the rights of her husband how many things is that four things four things there's a lot that goes on in a day i know there's a lot that may preoccupy us and busy us and there's maybe even more than that that distracts us even more than that that distracts us from social media from i mean to the end of it uh, social media is enough forget about it it's enough as a distraction right it is incumbent that we cut through all of these noise all of this noise and focus in on those things in which will benefit us wa alaykum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh that we focus in on those things which will benefit us and sisters in particular look if you were to preserve over your prayer the preserving of the prayer no doubt the first one enters into that is that you have to have knowledge you have to know about the ahkam of the prayer which will necessitate what then you have to know about those ahkam that are related and connected to it so for example you have to know about the the rules and the regulations as it relates to tahara to cleanliness to purity the the uh, to making the wudu you have to know about the wudu the rules and regulations that are tied and connected to the wudu you have to know about the ahkam of the salah you have to know what are the wajibat of the salah what are the arkan of the salah so on and so forth naam you have to, the shuruq for the salah so on and so forth requisites for the salah and conditions for the prayer so on and so forth you have to know how do you pray properly as the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said sallu kama ra'aytumuni usalli pray as you see me praying so we have to learn these things so that we know or yani so that we can pray the way that we supposed to be praying this is how we preserve over our prayers is not just performing the prayers but we have to make sure that we're performing the prayers on time in the proper manner that was taught to us by the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam naam that was taught to us by the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam naam wa hifdhuha li siyamiha and her preserving her fast her preserving her fast so this necessitates what that she has to know about the rules and the regulations of fasting she has to know about the rules and the regulations of fasting is very important naam and she must also safeguard her private parts it is incumbent that she learn what are those things by way in which will safeguard and protect her so that which comes from the standpoint of the proper dress of properly covering herself and so on and so forth she has to learn all of these things so that she may adequately and 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 and, and in the best of manners protect and safeguard her private parts also she will have to learn what are those characteristics that work and support the preserving of the private parts so for example being shy lowering the gaze uh so on and so forth then all of this will yeah and he speak when she speaks speaking not in a soft seductive voice but speaking in 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 a regular normal voice uh when she has to address men who are outside of her family that she straightforward direct to the point she does not add to it speech which is not necessary so on and so forth ma'am all of these are characteristics that are needed and they're tied into the preserving of the private parts and she must also learn what are those characteristics what are those nasty despicable traits that go against and fight against the preserving of the private parts so for example not lowering the gaze for example speaking to men in a sweet soft and seductive voice 
For example, being flirtatious and playing around with men who you're not married to. For example, not covering properly, so on and so forth. For example, uh, being alone in seclusion with side of men who are not from your mahadim, so on and so forth. She has to know what are these pitfalls so that she's able to avoid them because by knowing these pitfalls and avoiding these pitfalls, then this will work into what her preserving her private parts. So she has to learn all these things, the proper way she should be and then she has to learn the way she's not supposed to be so she knows to stay away from. Ma'am, and also the preserving of the rights of her husband, the preserving of the rights of her husband, then as mentioned in yesterday's class, she has to learn then what are the rights of the husband. What are those rights in which that the husband he has upon her, ma'am, so that she's able to establish them. Because if she were to do these four things that were mentioned, these four things that were mentioned, then on the day of judgment it will be said unto her, enter into Jannah from any door that you want. Enter into the Jannah. <clears throat> Enter into Jannah from any door that you want to. This here is tremendous. Ma'am, this here is tremendous. And we had mentioned at the onset that we will not be able to cover the whole of this book. Ma'am, and I always strive to keep expectations yani, reasonable. Don't give false expectations, no false advertisement, right? Then people get mad. No, you're not going to finish the book. We're going to take some of it. But you sisters, uh, those who have, yani, uh, have, uh, have gotten a, a, a copy, then that copy, that's yours. Please put your name inside of it so you know it's yours. Because I want you to read it from cover to cover. I want you to study it. I want you to read it with your husband. I want you to read it with your daughters. I want you to read it with your nieces. So on and so forth. Benefit from it. Contemplate over it. Reflect upon that which is contained therein. Those verses and those ahadith that come inside of this book, then I advise everyone to memorize them. They have the Arabic. The Arabic has the tashkil. And then the English translation is right under it. So to memorize all of the texts that come in the book so that you have that wherever you go. Now, your knowledge will be with you wherever you go. It will be with you because your heart is the vessel that contains it and not the inside portion of the books. Now, so I advise everyone to go through the book to memorize the proofs and the evidences. If you don't know Arabic, then memorize the English. If you, if, if you don't know Arabic, but you know someone that knows Arabic, if they can help you yani, in, in, in learning, right, uh, yani, how to pronounce the, the Arabic for the, 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 the proofs and evidences that is here, then have them uh, help you to memorize them, and, and so on and so forth. They go over, if they have to say, yani, for example, either, then you say either, 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 and you keep doing that until you memorize either, then you come to the next one. Salat. Sallatil, sallatil, sallatil. And then you gotta say sallatil. Al mar'atu, al mar'atu, al mar'atu. Sit in, yani. Ida, sallat, mar'atu. Sit in. And you have to do it like that and to memorize it. Then do it like that to memorize it. Alhamdulillah, no problem. But yeah. So my point is, I'm just saying is what? Well, it's really no excuse. And if you can't do that, then memorize the English. Memorize the English until you can do more. But please, go through this book. Benefit from it. Learn from it. Study from it. Review from it. Inshallah ta'ala, uh, and adorn yourself with that which is contained therein. And we ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa fiqhni wa iyaakum lima yuhibbuhu wa yarda that He gives us all the success. He gives me and you the success in doing that which He loves and that which He is pleased with. وَأَنْ يَجْعَلْنَا مِنَ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَمِعُونَ قَوْلًا فَيَأْتَبِعُونَ أَحْسَنَا That He makes us of those who hear a statement and then they follow the best of it. وَأَنْ يَجْعَلْنَا مُبَارَكًا حَيْثُ مَا كُنَّا And that He makes us blessed wherever we may be. وَأَنْ يَجْعَلْنَا مِنْ مَنْ إِذَا أُعْتِيَ شَكَرْ وَذُبُطُولِيَ صَبَرْ وَإِذَا أَذْنَبَ اسْتَغْفَرَ فَإِنَّ هَاؤُلَاءِ ثَلَاثَ عُنْوَانُ السَّعَادَ And that He makes us of those who are thankful when they are given, patient when they are tested, those who ask for forgiveness when they make sins, because verily these are three signs of success. We ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase us all in beneficial knowledge. We ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase us all in righteous good deeds. We ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He accept from us 
and he blesses us and on the day of judgment that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enters us into Jannah without any hisab and without any adab hadha fa naktafi bihadha al-qadar wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in wa jazakumullahu khayra